Absolutely. We can go through question bank if you want. Question uh, uh, 00101010010. Okay. Which of these amateur bands may be heavily occupied by license exempt devices? And they give you three, four different, obviously, four different frequencies, right? Mm -hmm. And the one happens to be 902 to 928. Mm -hmm. why, why is that there uh, heavily uh, occupied? I don't know why. <coughs> if you look at uh, Schedule 1 of that document I referred I to, yeah. you will notice that we are uh, shared secondary users. Okay, it doesn't, well, it's not on this one. It's on, that's yeah, the one that you guys provide. That's, that's an industrial scientific I'm getting there. Yeah. I'm uh, getting, I just want to first tell them okay, that Schedule it's there. 1. Let me go to Schedule it's a shared band and that shared band happens to be what we call an ISM band industrial scientific medical uh, uh, my definition mean? of that is it's an RF garbage dump <laughs> and the the uh, the sophisticated uh, explanation is this is a frequency band that if you have a device whether it's a radio or non radio device if its operation absolutely must emit radio frequency energy this is where you can stick it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we, we're on here, where does it even say that? That it's uh, that it's it says it's twelve megahertz and that there's a star, and I don't see anything else. Yeah, so let's schedule one. Right? Right here, 902. Yeah, I have it. I have it. Right, and there's a star. We're looking at the star. Uh, the notes. Well, call them three. The star means the transmission shall not cause interference. Miniature 535, 7, 8, 1 gigahertz. Well, it, okay, it, maybe it's not in the document. But if you went to the Canadian Table of Frequency Allocations, CFTA, which is on the, which you can get on the... Uh, so if we're on the band plan, we'd, we'd see something no, on that band No, it won't plan. be in the band plan. No. No, this, there's a document called the Canadian Table of Frequency Allocations. It is the final document. It has every frequency allocation, every service worldwide, recognized and what, it'll what, have what, notes in it what website would that be uh just type in canadian table of frequency allocations and you will get a hit canadian it's table of frequency allocations okay and there will be a hit under 902 to 920 or some range and it'll state that it's an ism shared frequency band amateur secondary basis and and it's a medical band is that what you said yeah, that's ism what industrial scientific medical you got a medical device that because it's it does its medical thing. It's not really a transmitter, but it can't operate without creating radio frequency interference. You're that's the band it should be in. So where would that be? Something in a hospital? MRI. Yes, MRI. hospital MRI. 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 Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So yeah. You're not trying to send anything noise. Yeah. But also there are other devices that are unlicensed that uh, need to up, can do short distance, low power. They're allowed to use the band as well. Industrial, scientific, okay. medical. So the, the reason is that it's a uh, shared, shared shared band. It's shared, shared to the point band. that, like I said, I, I refer to it as an RF garbage dump. <laughs> if you're lucky, it's usable. If you're not, if you live next to a hospital, probably not usable. Yeah. Okay. And the uh, 27 megahertz band is included in that as well, by, by the way. They are also an ISM band. <laughs> I tried to do the math, but I think there's an equation that I'm maybe not aware of that uh, for the one where the vehicle, yeah. Okay, let me show you something. This is, this is, this. I do this with all my students when I'm teaching. I, I forgot to do it with you guys. I'm going to show you something that you'll, you'll remember, you'll never forget it, and you'll be able to draw on it anytime, and you'll find it very useful throughout your life. There are basically four formulas that will get you through most any of this stuff. Elect electrical, basic electrical fundamentals, power, the relationship between current, power, uh, and, uh, and voltage. Um, and there's four basic formulas that will get you through just about any question. Okay, I'm going to show you a way to remember them. To do that, we're going to do a little exercise. Now, what I want everybody to do is close their eyes, and I want you to picture what I'm going to tell you to picture. Okay? All right. Picture a 
a plane, like a, like a uh, like an Arizona plane, wide open. And above the plane is this big mountain. So you got this nice flat plane, and you got this big mountain. Okay. Now, pretend you're the eagle circling the mountain, and you look down, and you see an Indian chasing a rabbit. Got that? Eagle in the sky, Indian chases rabbit. Got it? Okay, open your eyes. Eagle in the sky, Indian chases rabbit. And the eagle never lands. Okay, got it? Basic Holmes Law. Never forget it now. There are two more. Uh, P I E Pi Power equals current times voltage Just cover whatever you want to find Last one, per okay. P I R Square the I those three right there will get you through just about most anything you're going to run into with basic electrical. You said there were five. Hmm? You said four. Four, four. Did I say four? Yes. Yeah. 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 So, so I guess I meant three, sorry. I got confused here. Anyway, Eagle in the Sky, Indian Chases Rabbit, using the same formula, same, same concept, you get these other two, pi and per. So Eagle in the Sky, Indian Chases Rabbit, pi per. Remember that? You got the furnace. Yeah, you might want to consider changing that Indian bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're good. All right. To be honest, he's very, very lucky. It's me and not someone else. Oh. Well, uh, unfortunately, history has, that's what they were named, even though it was a mistake. Because <laughs> yeah, the guy landed and he thought, I'm in India. I got lost. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he didn't have a GPS? <laughs> you guys, uh, I'm not going to get it. No, I know. Okay. Seriously? Yeah. I can't because there's nothing else for I. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Anyway, there it is. I'm. Yeah. Yeah, I better go easy. Struggling to see how, which one I'm using here in this. So the, the question is. Your mobile HF transceiver draws 22 amps on transmit. Mm -hmm. The manufacturer suggests limiting the voltage draw to 0.5 volts. Uh, and the vehicle battery is 3 meters away. Yes. From, so given the losses below and the current, which minimum wire gauge must you use? Yeah, that's a tricky one. Okay. D okay. Now, does it give you uh, the specifications? So it says, it'll, it gives you the gauge of the wire. Yeah. The voltage drop per meter. Okay. And it says, well, which one do you want to use? So given that they are saying limit the voltage drop mm -hmm. to 0.5 volts. Yes. I thought the right answer would be or it asks what's which minimum wire gauge? Yeah, because it asks you the ten, the number ten wire is good for thirty amp. Yeah, well, it doesn't. It says number ten wire. That's the answer, all right? Ten. ten. Okay, is rated at 0 0.07 volts per meter. For that's its uh, its loss. What and they're looking for here is they need something that can handle the current. Yeah. But won't exceed the voltage drop. Yeah. So the answer is the one that's that's at or below those specs. So it can it can't it, it cannot exceed either the, the current maximum that you're going to draw or in, or the uh, minimum amount that you are willing oh to accept so for maybe, your voltage drop. So maybe number twelve wire won't accept twenty two amps. No. You have to do the calculations. Yeah. yeah. You do the calculations. The the calculations for number 12 wire? No, no. If you 
It's a simple series circuit. Yes. So you just draw a series circuit, and the resistor is is what is is your arc. Sure, Alan. Okay. So, what's, what what's the question? So, transceiver draws twenty two amps. Okay. So and I equals twenty two amps. And then the bat the vehicle battery is three meters away. Yep. And. Uh, the manufacturer suggests limiting the voltage drop to 0.5 volts. Okay. So, voltage across the here is 0.5 volts. Yep. And then you have your actual load, which is your radio. And it drops the rest of that, which is what's your battery? 12 volts? Um, it doesn't, it just says, it doesn't give you a battery, uh, a, it says limit the voltage drop to 0.5 volts. Okay, so let's say it's 12 volts, you're losing 0.5 across your wiring, that leaves you 11.5 across this second resistor. Okay. So that wire you said had a 0.07 volt drop? Hmm? That wire with 0.07 volt, right? Yes. That battery is 2 meters away, you got a wire on the positive and a wire on the negative, so that's going to be 6 meters total. Okay. That's what I probably was not taking into account that there's two wires. Two wires? Yeah, the way the the question, I think a one wire they have two come out that battery. Yeah. Okay. Alright. That Yeah, it's each each wire is a resistor, so in reality you have a okay. second resistor gotcha. in the length of an load. It's a tricky it's tricky. It's tricky. But that's what it is. It was, today was the first time current and voltage drop. The first time encountered it was today, so I thought, well, what's going on? What's really going on here? Wait, is there a calculation that I'm missing? Why am I not getting or not understanding this? I just wanted to. But it kind of fooled you because if it says 22 amps, right? 22 amps with a normal 22 amps, a uh, uh, a number what is it? A number 12 wire, I think, will take 20 amps, right? Yeah. So. You would think 22, that would be the one, but now you have to go back down to 10. To 10. Yeah, that's what you got to consider. Okay. But that, that's the, uh, I was just wondering if there was an, another formula or something. The no, they're there. just trying to get you to use basic right. Ohm's law and yeah. you know, add up the voltages. Three, just, three, just, seven, three, just break it down three, to a series circuit. Three, three, okay. seven, three, oh, nine. What else do I have that is curious? Yeah, that, was a, that was a tricky one for sure. Anybody else before I jump in on the next one? Go ahead. Uh, what were the curious ones? Uh, 696. Approximately how much gain does a half wave dipole have over an isotropic radiator? Okay, iso okay the isotropic radiator is the the base, or like the, the, the comparator. Well, no. Isn't that what they compare uh, antenna The gauges? isotropic radi radiator is, doesn't exist in real life. Yeah. It's an imaginary point that radiates the same in all directions with no gain. Okay. okay no so such then, animal. But they use it as a reference, like zero. Mm -hmm. So the half wave dipole just. It has the gain a of a half, half wave dipole. Okay. Which is 2.1, so it would just yeah, have a like, this is zero. larger lobes in. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. That's a trick question. Gotcha. <laughs> All right, I'm getting curiouser and curiouser. Next! mean that people who live in a van don't get to uh, be licensed radio operators in Canada? Uh, well, see, that would be, that would, no be a, that, that would be a case for the lawyers. Uh, we have to define what we refer to as a valid Canadian address. 
would a would like a person who lives in a mobile and they're moving around a lot that they have like a PO box? Could they have this like a PO box for them? If they or? live at the location that that PO box refers to, mm -hmm. they're they're not moving. Yeah, that would be a that'd be a residence. I have one. Canadian law defines a, a house trailer as a residence, so you need a warrant to get into it. Yeah, so if, you, if, it's, if, it's, if it's actually <laughs> mobile, it's hard to give it an actual specific address. But it's coming back to park the same place kind of thing. And not necessarily. You're coming across the country, yeah. you know, you just kind of go, ooh, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's something for the courts. Would we give a call sign to someone who lived in a mobile home and moved all around Canada? Certainly we would. But we'd have to centralize it somewhere because every call sign has to have a home base. There's no V, you know, it's it's VE three, it's VE two, it's VE one. It's no V theta or something. No, no thetas, no, no, no. Ethereals, no, none of that. Nope. Have another one. Mm -hmm. VM. One, one of the following is not considered to be communications on behalf of a third party, even though the message is originated by or addressed to a non-amateur. Okay. The answer is messages are originated from Canadian Forces affiliated radio services. I don't understand. What is that? Uh, the Canadian Forces affiliated radio service is a service made up of amateur radio operators, volunteers, and some military and some not. Uh, they meet at specific times on certain frequencies and they pass messages on behalf of uh, personal messages on behalf of the serving servicemen to their families back and forth. So that's not considered. It's not considered. That, that's exempted. It's not considered. Yeah. For Canadian forces personnel only. Okay. I'd like to say them the same thing. Uh, which of the following statements is not correct? A Canadian radio amateur may on amateur frequencies pass, or the, the, the question, or the answer is, pass third party traffic with all, with all duly licensed amateur stations in any country which is a member of the ITU. So that statement is not correct. No, it's not, not, the answer. not correct. So then. No. Being a member of the ITU, there are lots of people that are members of the ITU, but they have notified the ITU that they do not wish third-party traffic to be ah, passed, ah, okay. and those okay. are the ones that you can't pass traffic for. Okay. But it doesn't say that, right? It's it's, it's it a play on it words. It implies, I guess. They're right. trying to catch you. Yeah. Being a member of the ITU does not guarantee it's, that they don't oh, they okay. allow hmm. the, the, okay. because they're members. They are notifying. All right. Okay. That would make sense. Then. Okay. If it said a member of the ITU who that has not notified or not expressed an objection, that would be fine. But yeah, you have to look at the question that is the best answer to your question or the one that, you know, that's it. Yeah, I usually look at a question and I go, bullshit, 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 probably right, look at it again. Yep, that's the right one. Well, I've been noticing, <laughs> I've been guessing a lot lately. <laughs> yeah, bullshit. If anything, at least it's a little bit reassuring. Mm -hmm. Well, when the when the question is worded like that, especially, I find myself I'll circle the the nots or is whatever, uh, whatever mm -hmm. that you uh, indicated there, but also in in refer reference to the the transmitter receivers, I make sure I'm thinking, okay, transmitter, this is connected to this receiver. All right, receivers have. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Got to keep your wits about you. Yeah. It would be simpler if they always asked what which was correct, but they don't do that. As soon as you come in, you can draw the block diagrams. On yeah, your they're not committed to memory. They're nowhere well, committed well, to memory. You can, you yeah, you're yeah. allowed to. Yeah. As soon, but you can't come in with them. But you of course. Can draw the diagram right on your sheet. Yeah. As yeah. I did. I, I haven't like, taken the time to. Take, if you ask me to draw the. I'd probably be able to do the the CW one, but not the well, FM. There's at least eight. Or, there's at least eight that you have to memorize, right? Like there's the, the uh, what do you call it? Transmitters and receivers. You and I'm not memorize them all. All all all, uh, all radio equipment, uh, transmitters, receivers, they all record an oscillator somewhere. Yeah. To create the radio frequency, and usually the first frequency they have isn't enough, so they're going to need some mixing at some point. Mm -hmm. you know? 
So they all have mixers. They all they all have a, a master oscillator, or they have different names for them. But they they have to start with that. They all have a power supply. So they got to create a radio frequency. Then they got to they got to put an intelligence on it somehow. They usually do it with a modulator. And then you just have to know the difference between the types of modulators: balanced modulator, used for single sideband, an FM modulator, which is called a um, what's the term? Discriminator. Frequency discrimination, that's, that's for the receiver. Uh, what do they call it now for, for FM transmitter? As a, as a name. Frequency modulator. Uh, product detector? No, product detector, that's for side Frequency name. multiplier? Frequency talking? multiplier, I think that's the one, yeah. Um, and um, once yeah, they've done, yeah. the, so, the, so the idea is that you need to send out a disturbance in the atmosphere in some form that they can retrieve later. And they use different versions by increasing the levels up and down, the frequency of the of the mm -hmm. the device, or it's here or it isn't here. It's really what it's that's basically that's what radio is about. Yeah. And then you have to be able to take it and convert it either into a sound or some light indication or some other some other device that has to say, okay, this means that. But as far as radio is concerned, it's either there, it's not there, it's changing in frequency, it's changing in amplitude. Yeah. Uh, another another one, uh, I think I know the answer, but I asked the question anyway. In Canada, radio amateurs may use which of the following for radio control models? And they have 50 to 54 megahertz, and they have several other. The answer is uh, all amateur frequency bands above 30 megahertz. Correct. So we talked about yeah. that earlier. And why yeah. is that? That's why? the rule. I read it to you. But why? Because that's the law. <laughs> that's the law. They've drawn a line in the sand. 30 megahertz, nothing below that. We talked about possible reasons for the logical reasons for it. The propagation of below that's, those frequencies is worldwide. Okay, that's, I guess that's so what Putin, we're Putin's flying. playing with his, with his favorite uh, $10 million uh, toy. Yeah. And... Uh, uh, puts his Obama fires his up and boom down with those died for Putin. Vice versa. Exactly. Yes, it's uh, you know when you want to control something, you want to be you want to have a pretty good idea that you're going to maintain control of it and not get interfered. You know, mm -hmm. and in a world and trying to find a frequency on a worldwide basis uh, is very difficult. Like when we when we go to work on. Uh, Finding HF frequencies, and somebody actually asks for an HF frequency assignment, we are not going to find a frequency that no one's using anywhere. So we're going to look at uh, where that frequency is, what time of day it may affect, and what kind of conditions it may actually affect Canada. Hmm. So you know, uh, before we would actually pick it, and then we have to check. We have to register it with the International Re uh, Radio Frequency Registration Board through the ITU, and they look at it and they say, "Yeah, that's a good decision," or "No, nope, don't we better look again?" And it's a big process because there, there there are no more frequencies. In so, HF. so uh, Alan, I'm still a little bit confused. Mm -hmm. I mean, all all amateur frequency bands above 30 megahertz. So who else is above 30 megahertz? If you're going to use it for like radio control models and stuff like that, who else is above 30 well, megahertz? Police, fire, control. ambulance, television. Uh, yeah, you'd have to get the cellular telephone, band. all kinds of stuff. But no, no amateurs talk in that in that area in that range. Yeah, you're not supposed to interfere with them. You pick a frequency, you use it. If someone sees you're on it, they go somewhere else. Like a good example of city police are one forty three thirty. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you don't want to go on. You can it's not an amateur band. But if you got a decoder. If, but well, if you're on that, hmm? but, but if you happen to be on the 30 uh, uh, megahertz, around 30 mm -hmm. megahertz, yeah. how do you know you're interfering with the guy operating a radio? Uh, well, that's why you don't use it. Well, don't use it. Don't radio use amateurs it. don't use it above 30 megahertz. No, smart amateurs don't operate anything uh, below 50 megahertz. Okay. Yeah, but most radios <laughs> No, I'm talking about him. That, I'm talking about regular bands. Well, he was talking about other frequencies up there, but then he then he turned it back to just amateur frequencies. Oh. Okay, so I'm saying that uh, if, what if what if he used 30.1? And I'm just saying, well, you're going to have the same kind of propagation. Most amateurs just they just won't do it they, because of that. 
they know that it's not a good idea, even though the rules say they can do it, they're probably going to check a frequency that, that has no propagation characteristics that they need to worry about, 50 megahertz and above. Any other questions? Yep, yep, yep. Oh, yeah, yep, yep. One thing about the questions, if you have the time, try not to just memorize the answers. Try to understand why the other ones are wrong. Well, that's what I'm trying to get at here. Because then, then you can take the attitude I do when I do these things. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Real. <laughs> I'm not trying to memorize them. I'm trying to get to the bottom of what is the um, properties uh, or the science behind why this is the correct. And if you do that, then you're going to have a much easier time when the advanced course comes along. Because you'll already have the principles. It's easier to remember that way, too. You yeah, know, you already, you'll already have the principles. So the one that I got a question about is uh, transmission line differs from an ordinary circuit or network in communications or signaling devices in one very important way. That important aspect is propagation delay. So transmission line differs from ordinary circuit mm -hmm. in propagation delay. That's the answer? That's the answer. Yeah. Crummy question. Most amateurs shouldn't don't understand that, even even the uh, the advanced. Okay. Uh, propagation delay. Okay. Well probably impedance, right? The it's it's a combination of impedance. Uh, it has to do with the capacitance of the line. It has to do with the the amount of uh, physical microseconds it takes for the signal to travel from one one end of the line and come back. Oh, skin effect. It's not just, okay, okay. It's, you're not just worried I'm, about I'm current glad, or voltage. Yeah. I'm glad the questions that I'm bringing up are the ones that you're saying, like, yeah. Why is that? Okay. That's a memory question. Just know it. Propagation right. delay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they're on the test. Um, that's just what I'm trying to understand. Yeah, you, you're going to get propagation delay as soon as you put in an alternating frequency through a feed line. It's always going to happen. Because there's capacitance and there's mm -hmm. inductance. And you know that capacitors and inductors will actually change the, uh, the nature and slow down your signal. There's equations for all this. So yeah, there is. I don't maybe, know them. I don't ever we'll, want to know them. I'll hit up really the uh, advanced. Basically, what that boils down to is response time. Yeah, yeah in the sense, essentially. Oh, okay. The delay between when the signal so gets the there and comes back. Almost, even in computers, now, there's a lot of times when they got to throw delays in certain areas because of this idea that certain circuits yeah. take, you know, before they can come up with something meaningful and there's mm -hmm. no way for it. When you're dealing at high frequencies and a one microsecond delay can make the difference between a yes and a no, that's when you're really concerned about your lines. Yeah. <laughs> that's a straight memory one. one. But now you know what it's based on. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I don't remember hearing about a digipeter. A digipeter is a digital repeater of any type. That could be a packet radio station. That could even be a digital voice repeater, because technically it's receiving digital information and it's retransmitting the digital information. The fact that it's later converted to audible voice by a receiver is irrelevant as far as the repeater is concerned. It's a digipeter. Here's, here's a mouthful too that uh, kind of threw me. Uh, you done with that? Oh, yeah. yep, yep, yep. Which of the following is defined in, in, in MCAB2 as any device machinery or equipment other than radio apparatus, the use or function of which is or can be adversely affected by radio communications emissions. Mm -hmm. And the answer was radio sensitive equipment. Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't I don't understand the question. Maybe can you Okay. Can you uh, going back to question? radio frequency interference, I mentioned that radio frequencies can affect devices that are designed to receive radio frequencies and work in a radio frequency environment but they can also affect other devices that have nothing to do with being a radio, but can be affected by the presence of radio frequency in devices. Mm -hmm. it's devices that can be interfered with uh, that are intended for transmit and receive purposes, they're transmitters and receivers, they're a radio device. Devices that transmit a specific signal to do, to do some purpose or monitor it, you know, the same thing. 
But there are some devices that either, because of their operation, create radio frequency energy that can interfere with radio sensitive devices, that, which can include receivers. Um, and they're not really a transmitter, but they'll do it. And then there are other devices that can be affected by the presence of radio frequency energy. They're not a transmitter, they're not a receiver, but they are affected. And those I are considered an sensitive I to. I got an example of that one. Yeah. A defibrillator that they put in your heart are triggered by radio frequency by accident. A pacemaker? No, not a pacemaker. No? They can put in a unit called, it's a defibrillator. It actually, I like a big cap waiting in your chest. So if it senses that your heart is stopped, it was up. Okay? That can be triggered by a cell phone. Mm. Okay, another radio frequency. That's why they don't like putting them in, but sometimes they don't have a choice. Mm. So that'd be radio sensitive equipment. Yes, that would be radio sensitive. And thus exactly. your, your speaker equipment too. Your home theater would probably mm. also be Yeah, that's radio sensitive that equipment. Pick up yeah. yeah, speaker, speaker. Yeah. yeah. Uh, some so alarm systems can be triggered by the presence of, uh, much. of uh, systems. The early, uh, that, the early dust to dawn lights, it was very common. You're talking, you what can drop, drop a friend off at their house and you key up the repeater, their outside lights all come on. So why can't an audio and video record? Garage door wide open, yes. Earlier ones <laughs> that weren't digitally encoded, yes. Well, why, why can't they be? When they encoded them, that's less likely to happen. There's no ways to do anything. No, but why, what? So one of the an one of the answers to this yes. is uh, audio and video recorder. So why yeah. can't that be affected? Well, it's not the most correct answer. So the other, so this, and probably that's the answer. Is this because is because it limits it to two devices, whereas radio sensitive devices can be anything under the sun, including yeah. so audio. So it, it's the most correct. The most yeah. correct. Yeah. That's point. the trick. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, not. It's not A and B. It's A yeah, and all yeah, the above. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it doesn't, that, that doesn't work. <laughs> I, I did tell you that the, the, the <laughs> new uh, the new program that they create this with now yeah. scrambles the answers every time they generate an exam. They're, they're not A B C. They're not one two three. They're your yeah. already so. Oh, a, fellow, a fellow that I was uh, chatting about this with. Yeah. Um, he's also a, a ham, and I was just telling him about the online test exam. Mm -hmm. He was mentioning that some tests yeah. are adaptive and will notice if you're getting questions wrong in a certain area and then give you maybe more questions in that area. Do you know if this... As far as I know, that's not built into our automatic it's testing not. system. Okay. No. We won't be using that for the exam. Just but just as far as I know, they did not put that level of intelligence into it. it. it I asked my Johnny and I wasn't sure but when they generate the exam yes. for this course, yes. do they go on Industry Canada's site and issue, uh, like they get it from there? Yes. That's all they do? That's all they yeah. do. Okay. They go oh, in yeah. with their credentials, tell them they want an, I want an official examination, and it prints the official examination in an official fa examination format. It selects so many, frequency, or so many questions from each portion of the question bank. I mentioned they're coded. Mm -hmm. So, so many from 0, 0, 002, so many from 0, 005, and, and put, puts them into the, into the examination, prints the template, and uh, makes a decision on whether A or B or C or D is going to be right for each of the questions, because they're all scrambled. The wording stays the same, but the order changes, and uh, then it prints it out. And then if they have a large group and they want every second exam to be different, they'll do it a second time, and they'll have two and exams. Not a, not a curiosity. On the night that they write their test, Mm -hmm. And they pass. Yes. Okay. What's the next step after that? They will immediately enter it into the system. And if everything goes right, you could have an email giving you your call sign either before you leave the building or sometime tomorrow. Now, can you request <laughs> the call sign? That's part of the form. Okay. So, backing up a little bit, you said. The, the test that we're going to get is going to be exactly the same that we've been we, we've been trying on the test exam. Exactly. Yes. Same thing. They'll just, just pick. There are 500 one questions. They'll just pick They're one going to pick random, eh? random groups. Yeah. Pick 100. Okay. How many questions is the test again? 100. 100. 100. 
So I wanted to have a 900 yeah. database, right? 900 questions. 500. Something here. So they're picking 500. 500. One ninth of the total questions. 500. 500. 500. 500. I, I'm to, I did, I've don't believe it's 900. When I, uh, I was always told it was 500. When I downloaded and put it into an Excel and just mm -hmm. skipped to the bottom, it was 970 something. Oh, so they've increased the number? I heard it was 900. Yeah. I stand corrected. I haven't counted them lately. Do they have to bring a pen and pencil? No, it'll be all provided. Just yeah. Calculator. Yeah, bring your own calculator. No programmable calculators. How about a watch? No programmable watches either. <laughs> there are calculators. <laughs> watch, is got... watch is fine. Yeah. You have a calculator in that picture. Oh, you have no. good eyes. Your well, that's not programmable. <laughs> no, I'll say one thing. When, when Alan got, got me involved, when I took the test back in the 90s, and we didn't have what you guys had. Yeah. And I got to be honest with you, what I did is when I went in there and I literally, when I took the test, I looked at every answer and I just used common knowledge. Does that answer look even correct? Mm -hmm. You know, and I, and then, okay, eliminate that, go to the next one, eliminate. And you get like a 50 50 shot. Yeah. If you're not, you don't know what it is. It's just, and they, they will, they'll throw you a curveball. And it's just, you got to keep reading that, that question because yeah. in that question, yeah. there's going to be one little word that it's going to, Oh yeah. Take that answer, and it's going to be the wrong. You're going to pick. You think it's the right answer. It's the wrong answer. Mm -hmm. So that's what you really got to really, you and, know. But there's no it. time limit, right? So like Generally, no. There's no official time limit. Uh, I we usually expect it to be comp well. Well, we're kind of limited because we only have till nine o'clock, and then they boot us out. So. So that's two hours. <laughs> yeah, two hours. That's and, and, and generally, if anyone can't pass the test in two hours, yeah. uh, they're not going to pass it. Okay. Can't complete it in two hours. They're not going to pass it. They're not ready. Now, if you want help, is it five bucks an answer? <laughs> no, we don't give answers. We do give clarifications. Recommendations. Yes. If you don't understand the question, somebody understands it enough to tell you without giving them the answer, we can do that. Is it going to be here, by the way? Oh. Is, is the exam going to be here? Yes, it will be here. Perfect. There'll be two examiners. I'll be here as well. Uh, they will be doing all the examination. I'm just going to be around just for reference. To make sure that you guys are doing it. No, I'm just going to see if I can help them get through, and if they have a question, I can answer for them. Yeah. And just so you know, tonight too is that um, once everybody passes, yeah. Uh, at the meeting tonight, uh, the next meeting for the Alabama Amateur Radio Club, which is in December, mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be a, uh, it's not really a meeting, it's going to be for you guys. Uh, Bruce will probably bring it up, but we're going to have stuff here and we'll get some, uh, you know, a nice little let, not letter, what do we call it? Certificate. certificate. Yeah, completion so certificate. It'll be uh, the first Donuts Thursday of December and when it's going to happen. Yeah, okay, your, so. fir your, your first official am amateur yeah. radio soiree. Yeah. <laughs> Thursday, is it? First Thursday. First December. Thursday of each month. That would be the first. Then it's the first. Yeah. Yeah. It's on the schedule, isn't it? I mean, the original schedule. Uh, it's no, actually, the club website it should say on the, uh, the if you go on the club website, it should say a woman's radio club uh, meeting. It should be there. Any more questions? No. Yeah, I already had it. December the 1st? Yeah. yeah. Club yeah. meeting. Uh, Let me try one it's here. No, it'll be free. I guess. We'll flip the. Put the paper and uh, sort of grab one here and just uh, see what we got. That's a good one, guys. You should put on your thinking caps. If you are told that your station was heard on 21.375 kilohertz, but at that time you were operating on 7.125 kilohertz. What is one reason this could happen? A, your transmitter power supply choke filter was bad. B, your transmitter power supply filter capacitor was bad. C, your transmitter was radiating, radiating harmonic signals. Or D, you were sending CW too fast. C. Why? Harmonics, right? Three right. times the multiples. Three times the base frequency, or something like that. Yeah, that's yeah, what it is. The first two are claiming 
thing is in the power supply, which doesn't make any <laughs> sense. Exactly. Garbage. Throw it out. Bullshit. Bullshit. I was Bullshit. a little bit. I was a little bit uh, Bullshit. behind. Bullshit. Probably that one. On the harmonics, <laughs> uh, is the is it first harmonic is two times the frequency? Mm-hmm. And then they and just then, then, then two times that one, and two times that one, and two times that one. Double, double, double. Yeah. So if you take that okay. frequency, seven point one two five. Double it, double it, and then double the next frequency, 14, and so on. You're going to end up at twenty-one point three seven five at certain point. Three times, three times right? So okay. You, you three times. Harmonic in any number as long as it's a whole number. Yeah. So you could have that frequency times one or times two or three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Times one, times oh, two, times. Okay. Oh, just be doubling it. I was thinking. I was thinking not. Times can, one times two times three. I was thinking. Times one, times two, times four, times. It can go that way too, but those are multiple. That, that's, that's getting into higher level harmonics. Every time you do a multiplication, you add another level of harmonic. Yeah. So if it's uh, if it's two times the next time, you're looking at a f at a fifth order. Okay. Uh, third so then, uh, third level harmonic, which so is very weak and usually not going to happen. The first, second, third harmonics would just be those are the ones frequency the bad times ones. one or frequency times two, frequency times three, yeah. frequency times yeah. four. Yeah. Okay. That would be uh, did, first order. Did you harmonics. get a copy of For those? First, second, and third order. Did, order. Did, are you hmm? going to send us a copy of those, uh, what do you call the um, block diagrams? Uh, well, I could. I put them on a website or something. I don't know how I could do how I get them to get them to you. Fuckers. This is from yeah, an old... This is from an old RIC 24 document, which was retired several years ago, mm -hmm. uh, where we actually used to have a specific approved set of block diagrams that were used for the test. You would get this diagram with the test blank, and you would be asked to fill in oh, yeah. A, B, C, or H, or whatever. Mm. That's what mine was. Yeah, I thought they were. Mine was the same. Okay, so we went through this, and we know right away your transmitter power supply filter choke was bad. What's that got to do with radio frequency? What happens if you've got a bad choke in, your power, in a power supply? It's going to hum. It's not going to filter properly. You're not going to get proper DC. You're going to have a lot more problems than just putting out harmonics. Your lights might not even come on. Uh, transmitters, filter capacitor, same thing again. You're going to get a hum. Radio's not going to work. You're going to know something's wrong. You're not going to be happily operating at 7.125 and not, totally unaware that you're being hurt. Not when you've got power supply problems. The power supply doesn't work. Nothing works. And sending CW too fast. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> I mean, you got a transmitter. You turn it off and on. You turn it off and on. It doesn't matter how fast you turn it off and on. It's not going to make any difference. It's still going to transmit on the same frequency. So the rest of them are just uh, uh, leading you down the garden path. There's a lot of that going on, right? Yes. <laughs> Here's another good one. You guys talked about SWR, right? Mm -hmm. Standing wave ratio? Yeah. Okay. What does a very high SWR reading mean? The transmitter is putting out more power than normal, showing that it's about to go bad. The signals coming from the antenna are unusually strong, which means very good radio communication, or can get very good radio <laughs> conditions. There is a large amount of solar radiation, which means very poor radio conditions. Or the antenna is the wrong length for the operating frequency, or the transmission line may be open or short circuited. Yeah, that's an easy one. That, that, one, that, last, that last one sounds like it's. That's the an easy one. one. <laughs> yeah, there's something wrong with your transmission line or your antenna. That's what your standing wave ratio is. There's more power coming, there's power going out of the transmitter, and too much of it is coming back, being reflected. The other two, well, you know. Uh, here's another good one. Which of the following is not amplified by an amplifier? Power, resistance, current, or voltage? Resistance. Why? I can amplify resistance. It's impossible. Okay. Yeah, you can't amplify resistance. Mm -hmm. You just you add, add more. You, you, can, add, you can add resistance, but you can't amplify can resistance. Amplify. <laughs> it's passive, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, but you can't have a power amplifier, and you can't have current amplifiers, and you can't have voltage amplifiers. It's not fair. He's giving us all the easy ones, right? <laughs> yeah, but those easy ones are the ones that'll catch you. Well, <laughs> it's 
Christ. In inductances. Christ. You want these? Okay, we'll a difficult one. In inductances, AC, meaning alternating current, oh. may be opposed by both resistance of the winding wire and reactance due to inductive effect. The term which includes resistance and reactance is capacitance, impedance, resonance, or inductance. Impedance. Why? Impedance is the capacitance and inductance. Yeah. Correct. It's always it's it's react it's a reactive component. Impedance is the is the reactive is the reactive component of the circuits. If the circuit's reactive, it has an impedance. If there's no reactive component, meaning no inductance or no capacitance, there's no reactance and impedance doesn't apply. It's a resistance. It's just resistance. Capacitance by itself, you're already talking about inductance. So where's capacitance coming in? You're, they're asking you about inductance. Now they say, oh yeah, it's just a capacitor. Well, no, not. How about, how resonance has nothing to do with the uh, resistance of anything. 